Yeah, hello everyone. Um, yeah, really excited to be here. And uh, today's topic, uh, personal agency institutional adoption is something um, that's very personal for me, but I think I'll start with a bit of introduction for those who don't know me. Um, I'm Evgeny Gaivoy. I, I'm the CEO of Intermute. Uh, we are one of the we are one of the leading uh, market makers in cryptocurrency space. We trade across all the major centralized and decentralized exchanges. And we, we have a sizable presence on OTC side, but like we, we've been really early on the DeFi, in the DeFi ecosystem trading the back, back in 2019. And basically this, this topic, this, but well, part of it is personal agency, part of it is institutional adoption is something I feel quite strongly, strongly on the philosophical level, I guess, because it's, uh, it's something I keep thinking about a lot. Uh, but at the same time, it's, it's very important for us on the business side because we are deeply ingrained in DeFi, not just as an institu institution, but also as, a, as somebody who is active user for a lot of those protocols like DYDX and uh, Uniswap, and somebody who is also building actively in the space and uh, participates in the space and, well, honestly, burning a lot of Ethereum uh, every day. Um, and I, I hope you guys are either old enough or geeky enough to appreciate the, the graphical references throughout this presentation a bit. So I will start with, I was just, just like how a lot of those talks are going, I will start with a bit of a well, history, I guess. And um, starting with very much on the personal agency side is basically how it all started. Uh, and it all started with a guy who mined the first Bitcoin and then uh, and release the paper, not necessarily in the soda. Um, and what I find what I find really interesting about is not necessarily the underpinning technology, which is on one on one hand simple, on the other hand like really actually allowing to achieve a lot of things. But actually, the set of values, set of ideals, is that uh, that draws this technology forward. And it basically starts with personal agency, which basically means well, being the master of your own fate. Um, and it also, that's better. Yay. Hello? OK. And also, interestingly, it's about this concept of sovereignty. And uh, what's important for me in this is like there is this concept of freedom, of course, and sovereignty is something different because freedom is ultimately in, freedom ultimately impacting others. Like your personal freedom is impossible without impacting and coercing sometimes others into like achieving things. Uh, while sovereignty is something else. Sovereignty is basically being independent from the outside world and being well, basically being being able to not really coerce anyone to achieve anything, uh, but same, at the same time achieving your own goals. And that's, that's, I think, a very important distinction from, well, on the philosophical level, but also something that drove, well, Bitcoin uh, as a technology, as a movement uh, from early on. And while you might, might think, okay, it's just libertarianism, uh, it's like idealistic views and everything, what's the reality is like those values, those uh, like this set of ideals. It actually drove the drove how the technology was determined, how how it was built, and this trillion dollar well market cap for Bitcoin. That it's, uh, that it's again in, the, in that range. It's it w would not be impossible without without the set of ideals. Um, but things don't stay at vacuum, and as we like as we progress and uh, basically fast forward into uh, 2000. Uh, 2017. Um, that, that's where that's where Wintermere started. That's where I actually started my crypto journey as well. And that's that's where we've seen a lot of tokens appearing, a lot of uh, new projects appearing. Some of them being incrementally better than Bitcoin. Some of them doing something very different, like Ethereum. Some of them being honestly outright scams. Uh, but it, it it did create it and it did create a new narrative. And the narrative was about. Yeah, what happens when those individuals that value their like sovereignty so much? What happens when they team up? And what happens when they team up is effectively DeFi summer that we like a lot of us experienced last last year, and it basically brought with itself like a new set of values, new set of ideals, uh, which on one hand was much broader and somewhat contradictory to what Bitcoin was about, 
But on, on the other hand, it was it, it kind of built on top of it, and it was a lot about decentralizing governance. So it was about like-minded individuals getting together, building stuff together, and basically, yeah, being independent in that in that regard. It, yeah, is this better? Oh. Feels even better. Yeah. Wow. Um, and on, on the other hand, it was like it was about co-creation. So it was about well, those, those Lego building blocks uh, that Max has mentioned in the, previous in the previous conversation. It was about those building blocks that became much more powerful than uh, than they would be otherwise on its own. Like maker make a DAO would not be really important if we would not be able to trade die on uh, on Uniswap or borrow it on DYDX back in the days. And uh, but at the same time, this concept of sover sovereignty it's kind of State, but it became much, much bigger because we've seen individuals grouping up in DAOs and being sovereign in their own DAO ecosystem, and we've seen the whole crypto ecosystem being very sovereign and really willing to operate on its own without, well, without like any outside control or without any outside regulation, which we will come back next uh, soon. And effectively, what that what it means, and I actually skip back. It's it's again this 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 growth and this technology would not be possible without without those without those failures pretty much because we would not be able to be here if if it was driven by just just by desire of I don't know greed or making money on the tokens going up. Although that was definitely part of the well, part of, part of the growth, of course. Um, and we now now we enter a, like well. So the next set of uh, adoption uh, curve, and that's that's where institutions come in, and there is not so much to fast forward to because we are we are here now. Like, and at the initial glance, we see some of those headlines, and we see I don't know George Soros buying Bitcoin and some other institution buying Bitcoin. We we see all kinds of uh, Elon Musk uh, news uh, back and forth. We see MicroStrategy buying Bitcoin like crazy, and it feels like adoption, but and it's exciting, and Bitcoin ETF will be exciting when it gets released. But to me, it's kind of sad in a way, because once you like once once you realize that all it does is just treats crypto as just another asset class, while it's so so much bigger, it basically ignores all these like values and ideals that created Bitcoin and DeFi, and it just sums it up into well asset class that you can invest into. And look, it's the future is. Like the future that we can come up to is, yeah, institutions will buy all the all kinds of tokens, they will all go up, they will be on a balance sheet, and then, but then I think the overall value creation will be very very limited, and what we will end up with is something much smaller compared to well another pass, and this another pass is, well I guess I guess that's that's the main thing I want to talk about actually because there is much more. Like on the institutional side, there is much more they can do potentially, but and it's not really in idealistic ways that yeah, go institutions do stuff for us so that we are all happy. It's actually, it's actually beneficial for both institutions uh, and the space to for them to do so. And uh, that's that's I guess where I would like to kind of step back and discuss, yeah, who the well, who the dragon is, who the main boss is, because. You you would probably see a lot of animosity towards like certain I don't know towards regulators towards institutions towards uh, governance and like to me it sometimes feels really personal what's going on uh, but what's important is underneath it is something dif very different underneath it is simple goal to make stuff more efficient and it for me personally it resonates very deeply because that's like that that's what drives me like I have my Values and ideals, but at the same time, I have like basic stuff that drives me, which is I, I really want to make things more efficient. And kind of going back to my years in traditional finance, like before starting Wintermute four years ago, I was working at Optiva, which is one of the leading market makers in traditional finance, trading billions uh, every day. And I was a market maker, so I was making markets more efficient. But with every year, like over 10 years, with every year, I would see that, well, Institutions would, well, legacy institutions would make our lives tough because their technology would just stay the same. Regulators would make our life tough because 
the regulation will be very reactive and not really proactive and it would actually make things more complex and way less efficient without necessarily achieving it goals and yeah don't get me started on taxes because yeah i think it's it's a really messed up system uh, pretty much everywhere in the world um and so i i got into blockchain very late like in 2016 or so and what what was interesting for me were from the very beginning was just just the potential for it to make things more efficient and that's what really drove me in the space and that's what led me to quit my job and focus on the space uh, full time not necessarily just buying bitcoin which i did much later um and back to the, back to the adoption piece like if if i'm looking at uh, institutions like the real adoption to me is actually those kind of headlines it's basically visa buying a crypto punk nft for the art collection or sogen looking at make a dow and actually yeah minting some die out of it uh, up to 20 million which, which is which would be really amazing when it happens and this is much more impactful to me personally and i think it's much more impactful for the whole space and even the for investors and soros buying bitcoin because this is what this is what like actual first steps toward adoptions towards adoption are, are looking like and it's it's obviously yeah like if if you look at uh, the structure behind like sodgen deal it's it's doesn't look efficient at all it looks rather rather messy and uh, monstrous to a degree but i think it's the first basic steps which would allow all of us to, to actually see well new world and this this is this is about basically transi- about transition from this legacy tax stack to blockchain and don't get me wrong like I, i love blockchain but i don't think every everything will move to blockchain but we have an opportunity here to get rid of uh, get rid of uh, a lot of traditional uh, institutions like uh, clearing houses like this stuff should just go because it's just it's bloody inefficient <laughs> sorry for my friends um inclusivity like really really important as well because what what you have now is the system where well the best opportunities are resolved for well people who are already quite wealthy and it's it's no way any inclusive uh, as opposite to what we have in defi and transparency which is like it sounds like a really good thing but it actually yeah, driving more transparency in the traditional finance would would bring more clients because it will just increase it would simply increase trust um and the final bit is self regulation and uh yeah we, we can talk about regulation and how it works and why it doesn't work but i think like one kind of experiment that wasn't tried yet in defi is like what happens if you allow the system to self regulate uh it doesn't happen that much like you see self regulation well, you see self regulation on level of uh daos so you see like a lot of governance proposals being uh proposed you see a lot of bad actors being called out with different proposals and that's that's all very cool but you don't see you don't necessarily see a lot of self regulation you see a lot of self correction you see centralized exchanges cooperating with hacking hacker like could not not as hackers but like with with the guys who try try to catch those hackers and i think we, what we are kind of lacking on defi side is like more of the self regulation basically an opportunity to proof to regulate as it can be done differently it can be done more efficiently it can be done in a very different different way and uh, basically where we are find ourselves now is like we can, we can choose this first pass of just treating the bitcoin and crypto as an asset class and see it growing from 2.3 trillion to i don't know 10.3 trillion uh or maybe less or maybe more or we can we can actually see it completely replacing the like integral parts of a current system and that that would actually mean that the institutions need to take this personal agency or personally and actually puts put themselves much more inside the current system and uh, try to well experiment quite honestly and try to take risks uh because that's that's what all all, all this is about and if you basically take the adoption and multiply by investment you will get like much bigger pie and so you will get a much bigger slice of the pie and that's that's when i'm going to conclude pretty much in general yeah come talk to me after this talk uh we are doing a lot of stuff in the space we are building we are trading so come build with us come trade with us come come vote with us um yeah we are here for you and uh, we would love to work with you thank you that was awesome we do have a little bit of time 
uh, for Q&A if anybody has any questions for you. Um, we're more than happy to ask anything that you want. Put your hand up, let us see you. Oh, we're all very quiet today, huh? Um, where can people find out more about Wintermune and how is it, uh, what's the best place to find out more stuff on you as well? Well, the basic stuff is on the website. I'm pretty receptive on Twitter as well, so feel free to just DM me. And what's your Twitter handle? Uh, my first name, last name, very easy. Great stuff. Well, thank you very much for coming down. We're really, really proud to have you here today and wish you all the best at Wintermune. Thank you. Big thank round you. of applause.